Welcome. My name is Marie Vickles. I'm the Director of Education, and I would like to thank you for watching this conversation between PAM curator Jennifer Inacio and artist Tara Long, formerly known as Poor Girl. Jennifer and Tara came together to discuss the exhibition My Body, My Rules and the responding public program Performance Four Ways, which featured Tara's video piece, Side A. This series of conversations highlights the importance of research, multidisciplinary performance formats, and the diverse lived experience of the artists and scholars that inspired them. The exhibition, My Body, My Rules, is a group exhibition that examines the mainstream portrayal of women confronting the stereotypes, violence, limitations, and ideals imposed on the disputed image of the female body. My Body, My Rules features women artists working across mediums that include painting, sculpture, photography, and video. The works in the show are unified by a strong commitment to contemporary discussions on gender, race, body politics, resilience, and self-representation amid today's social landscape. Let's watch. So it's, it's a pleasure to have you here. Um, you know, we are in My Body, My Rules, an exhibition um, curated with female identifying artists, um, and, you know, we had the pleasure of having your work here at the museum in a performance program that the education uh, department put together. And before we dive a little bit deeper into the work that was exhibited here um, during, that, during that program as part of a performance program, I do want to get more um, a brief background on your work, you know, as an artist, as Tara Long, but also how did you develop Poor Girl? So Poor Girl was a moniker I developed based on a personal history. Mm -hmm. um, I wrestled a lot um, in the early years. It's been a project going on for six years now. I'm moving away from it mm -hmm. and kind of claiming my own name, Tara mm -hmm. Long, as mm -hmm. the artist now. Very um, difficult for me to do, <laughs> but I am doing it. So yeah, Poor Girl came out of a out of insecurity and doubt that developed through my childhood based mm -hmm. on what was going on and people feeling sorry for me as mm -hmm. a young girl. Mm -hmm. So I heard the words poor girl a lot kind of whispered behind mm -hmm. me as a kid, like, oh, that poor girl, like what happened to her, so tragic, blah, blah, blah. And I think that people don't really understand that sometimes that can be condescending, like the pity. Mm -hmm. And I guess when this character first developed, it came out of both a rage, like raging against the pity mm -hmm. and the a bit kind of um, demeaning almost like, oh, like I guess I'll never be able to you know, mm -hmm. be on the level yeah. of everyone else because I'm just this poor girl. And it, so it was a mix of what it was like to go through those specific tragic mm -hmm. things and also the anger to try to come out. Um, and that's sort of why the last th or the girl is like, girl. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> I was working with sound at the time, but more just like abstract sound performances. And together with realizing this name that came to me mm -hmm. and working with the sound, I put it together, started working with Andrew Bird and we developed uh, I guess a band mm -hmm. um, and that band went on to perform um, poor girl has two records that are out uh, the one that that video is from that song is from a record called all smoke no fire it's the second record that we put out and it is vinyl only mm -hmm. um, it was a very cathartic performance um, for me, and I think it actually did work. I was able through performing that character to kind of break out of this cyclical 
phase that I was in mm -hmm. as an artist and now have moved on to being able to make work about other things, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is very exciting. Um, and I, I, we also have a whole bunch of music and a whole record basically that has yeah. not come out mm. under Poor Girl. And I guess to wrap that up, um, now that the NFT craze has come mm -hmm. about, I feel like I may just wrap up Poor Girl as an NFT uh -huh. and oh, submit her to the world for purchase uh -huh. as she is also an anti-capitalist uh -huh. sort of um, performance. Oh, amazing. Yeah. And um, what about Tara Long? So you did, um, you grew up making art, right? And then you went into, um, into university and, and that's, so Poor Girl developed a little bit after that, but what was uh, Tara Long as the artist uh, producing? What kind of work? So now that Tara Long is here, finally, <laughs> we got through the Poor Girl. Um, I have started working with fabric mm. and that has been so incredible for me coming mm -hmm. from music and sound where what I was interested in, I realized is the texture layering. Yes. And that's why I guess Poor Girl is, it's um, very awkward because people want to call me a musician or a singer or this. And for me, I feel more just like a conceptual artist mm -hmm. that was using sound. And the way that I used it was very much similar now to the way that I use fabric and different mm -hmm. textures and layering yes. them and textures that people maybe are kind of like, ooh, that plasticky, ooh. Like, I like <laughs> to put that together with a nice velvet or it's uh, very much translating now mm -hmm. into material. Um, I was very afraid of material for a long time. I think I hold material work really sacredly mm -hmm. uh, growing up. I was almost afraid to try to make something mm -hmm. because I held it to such honor when people could make something. So yeah, I've created now a bunch of giant sculptures um, <laughs> that go along with an allegory that also has a video that also has sound mm. and I perform in the installation. So yeah. it's kind of like, it all Sorry came together that. in a very beautiful way. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Now, um, going back to um, Poor Girl and the creation of this person, it's really interesting as you were describing it. Um, it does make me think a lot about like, we have Cindy Sherman here and the exhibition and we have um, this, photographic wall, which I was interested in, in, in putting all of these works together as a way to see how, um, um, uh, how these um, artists are using this medium to create either different personas, but also like the performatic elements um, to gain control of how, how they're seen, right, as artists, as women uh, within society. So how, um, was it to navigate, as you mentioned, you know, you didn't want, you saw yourself more as a conceptual artist, but um, how did you navigate this music or the sound world as, as a woman? Was, were there any challenges there as, you know, um, <laughs> within that industry? Yeah, so mm -hmm. um, totally. And yeah. that's why when um, I was contacted to think about how I could be in the show, it just was so simple mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I experienced so much of all the things. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, the work itself is very, um, it confronts these expectations of mm -hmm. specifically like a woman entertainer, you mm -hmm. know, and what is expected when mm -hmm. you see a woman walk onto stage or when you yeah. see a woman on in the in a film, there are, embedded expectations. Is she beautiful? Mm -hmm. Is her voice beautiful? Yeah. What is beautiful? Well, well, what is it? Um, so there are those things. And with this performance, I tried really hard to mm -hmm. hold on to what I, I guess my um, personal kind of uh, drive 
And that was not easy at all. Mm -hmm. Everyone wanted to form the work into something that could be more mainstream or mm -hmm. could be more palatable for the yeah. radio or, um, or they wanted my look to be more feminine. Um, mm -hmm. I have a theater background as well as art, so I know all about how to be on a stage and face the front and mm -hmm. project. And I purposefully in this performance rejected all of that. Mm -hmm. I would turn around a lot. I would perform looking down. I would be upset. I wouldn't have makeup on. Mm -hmm. My clothes would be shabby. So I really pushed those norms or mm -hmm. those stereotypes or those expectations to the point where people were like mad at me <laughs> and upset and they couldn't understand why I wouldn't just change this and that to become, you know, um, I almost, as soon as something starts working, mm -hmm. I veer away from it yeah. because it's that upsetting that things mm -hmm. are so rigid and mm -hmm. controlled and yeah. I want to break them open and mm -hmm. show people that it is okay to be what you are, mm -hmm. come as you are. You don't have to form into these very bland molds that we have now mm -hmm. because of, I guess, the late great capitalism. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and um, I, the video, the, the side A, um, it's so interesting because you, you just talked about consumerism. There's, um, oh, what's the name of the program? The Queen for a Day, yeah, which is so crazy. I did not know about that show until I saw your, your video. It fascinating? It's fascinating also how, you know, the, the prizes are these, the idea that they could heal, you know, these pitiful stories <laughs> with, with objects, with materialism, with, you know, consumer capitalism. Um, exactly. And also the objects, right? They're like these household, like China house items <laughs> that, <wheelchair>. like, yeah, <laughs> what 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 a woman would be happy with, which is kind of insane. Yeah. So, so what was that process of of using these um, these uh, historical, right? Historical um, shows, also the sweepstakes, right? Yeah. The, um, I can't remember the, the title. Supermarket sweep. Supermarket sweep, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just watch the show this sometimes. before the revival. Yes. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I watched the revival. Yeah. But, um, yes, so how, what was the process of, of using these specific, um, you know, imagery and, and history of these shows within your work? Yeah. Within the video. Um, so... That video is so special to me. I worked uh, very closely with a good friend and also artist, Christine Brache, who directed and edited that video. And we got together and, you know, tried to storyboard what we wanted to happen. Um, the song in that video is a lot about um, kind of like struggling through mm -hmm. mental stuff. Uh, and I wanted to pair that with what creates that mental mm -hmm. struggle, which is yeah. this external environment um, and TV, media, um, the pressures that are here now because of that and reaching back to where they came from, which would be like pulling the queen for a day in was, you know, queen for a day, I think think is now considered one of the first reality TV mm -hmm. shows yeah. um, and that, you know, there's conversations around exploitation and, you know, people using their pity and their tragedy for people to consume and then they get a reward for that, which relates, I think, a lot to the supermarket sweep and we get to watch these people kind of desperately <laughs> like run mm -hmm. through the store and look for these goods and win these big prizes and this like game show of life we're all playing. And I wanted to just kind of smash it all together with this dreamy, ephemeral, loungy, crooning mm -hmm. kind of old school singer, mm -hmm. um, just as almost uh, to make a very confusing soup Mm -hmm. to reflect the very confusing soup of it all mm -hmm. anyway. And um, I think the video came out really beautiful 
no one could understand how we were going to mix those things together mm -hmm. at first. Yeah. Um, so they may seem like slightly disconnected, but at the same time, I think they're extremely oh. threaded um, with those themes of exploitation, the feminine kind of body mm -hmm. or whatever that may be for people now. And then also the fact that there's always like a male host, mm -hmm. it's like always mm -hmm. like a male kind of giving this yeah. away. And he's the person that's very put together and is able to kind of like decide what to do. Mm -hmm. And it's very, um, there are undertones also mm -hmm. with the overtones that I wanted to capture. You know, there's a part in the video where the woman pulls this like wrinkly napkin out of her pocket and she's just like doing this in her hands. And there are so many little tells of the discomfort mm -hmm. that this creates. Um, and I wanted to kind of play with that in a gentle way and working finally with a, um, female identifying director mm -hmm. really brought it out yeah. up until that point I had only worked with like male identifying mm -hmm. directors so I think together we really just mm -hmm. yeah I know it's you, you you said it right you know there are these different stories but they just work so great together it does connect you know with the singing and this this long and nostalgic almost feeling yet uh, it's it's going back to the past but also showing what you know what we're still living today with with these reality shows that pressure of the media on, on what we are how we're perceived um, not just you know obviously women a lot more than others but um, society in general. Now, you did mention that this um, video was for a song as part of this vinyl record. Um, is And this is only on vinyl, right? Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit more about that project and, yeah. and how that came about? Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, I was just thinking while you were talking, that video in itself um, being uploaded onto YouTube, which mm -hmm. is, you know, we all know the platform it is uh, in itself was almost a um, move, an action of defiance. Mm -hmm. um, people don't have the attention span for a nine minute song mm -hmm. <laughs> um, or a nine minute music video. And so putting something up there that is nine minutes long mm -hmm. and more of a conceptual droney experience than a very fast paced mm -hmm. like explosion yeah. that action in itself i felt was very intentional after putting out one record on the internet that i made very it's a very abrasive record mm -hmm. it's very aggressive it's very abrasive it's called Pity Party. There are videos for that that are also short and aggressive. Mm -hmm. This next record, I wanted it to be a lot more personal and mm -hmm. I wanted it to not be accessible for the masses. Mm -hmm. This is a more special, softer, and for people that want to understand a little more. Um, and those two songs, it's two songs on that record, just side A and side mm -hmm. B, and that's why that song is called Side A. Um, I want to almost keep it coveted and mm -hmm. keep it away from this mess that we're all in. Mm -hmm. um, and so even for the video, I didn't want to use the studio recording. Mm -hmm. I wanted to keep that sacred and you know, re-record a, a song. And actually, I have friends that have the record that love the song on the record. Mm -hmm. You know how you get really attached mm -hmm. to a version of a song yeah. and they don't like as much the song in the video uh -huh. because it sounds different. But that is definitely what I was going for. Mm -hmm. I needed it to be separated a little bit. Well, thank you so much, Tara. It was a pleasure to get a little glimpse of, of your work and um, also what's to come. So we'll keep looking forward to to see more of, of Tara Long's work. Yeah. And um, <laughs> uh, thank you so much for, for being here. Thank you so much for Enjoy. inviting me. Thank you. <laughs>